Hello Pianist, you just heard a performance demonstration of the lovely Dream Echoes written by E.L. Lancaster. You can practice and learn it along with me from Alfred's Group Piano for Adults, Book 1, on pages 116 to 117. It's an excellent first romantic style piece. It'll help you read by chords and patterns, play with the damper pedal, which we'll talk about today, add phrase shaping, louder, softer, and you probably heard that technique of rubato, that expressive tempo where it's not always strict tempo all the way through. So let's get started on the rhythm category of our musical learning pyramid. We always look at our time signature first. It's common time of 4-4. Four, four. It's really easy rhythms of quarter notes and a few half notes. You could practice this with a really slow metronome beat. It's written at 108. That would actually be a good practice tempo to start at. A common mistake I want to point out that belongs to the rhythm category of this piece is students will often hold the notes longer than written. So do observe the rest. Even though it's written with pedal, do some practice without pedal so you can hear that that left hand lifts and then the right hand lifts, lift. You could even practice tapping that left, left, lifts there. Right, 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 right lifts, left, left, right. So do observe the rest. Even though you have pedal, it doesn't cover everything. We can still hear when you're sustaining things with the fingers with the pedal on. Do notice within the rhythm category, you might even circle, there's two retardandos that really direct that expressive feeling of this piece, so don't ignore those. Next, let's move to the note reading and fingering pyramid level. We'll get started with landmark notes. Begin with your left hand. I'm noticing that the left hand starts on a G a step above that F3, so the five fingers on G number three. The interval up from there is a space to space, skips over space. That is a perfect fifth. So the thumb is a step above middle C. Make sure you have good tall fingers, one and five. Don't be flat like that. Good technique so you can use arm weight and wrist circles. The right hand starts with the thumb on landmark G, number four, plays up a fifth. Both the hands are set within five finger scale positions. These beginning pieces are set to build automaticity within your hand plane. Okay, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do some blocking of intervals so I get used to the way this will feel and sound. Left hand starts on a fifth, fifth, and then a second, same pattern. Now I just have a half note. This will give you time to move your hands. Measure five, the left hand's gonna move down space to space to skip. See if you can do that, not watch your hands. Fifth, fifth, second, third, same pattern. Transpose to E minor, down a third. This move in the right hand at measure nine, you might need to watch, but it's going to be a step apart where the left hand's set, down a third, up a third, measure 11, back up a third, down that third, down, up. Okay, notice I have underneath the staff at major 12, a one five hyphen one. That's what we use in the pianist world for fingering substitutions. If I would have to just jump my five down, I can feel that, but I've played piano for a long time. As a beginning pianist, leave your five in place and you're gonna substitute that thumb and then you can feel. So just take that in slow mode, five, thumb substitutes, and then I'm in place to play that D down there. This is like a hand over hand arpeggio at 13 through 16, but with open fifths. Fifth, fifth. Measure 15 careful, this measure repeats from 14. Second, beautiful third. 17 is a repeat of the beginning. Fifth, second, third, fifth, fifth, second. Feel the third down, fifth, second, third. Move left hand early. You can watch there to bring it down. Left hand down a third, right hand up a third. Left hand up a third, right hand down. Only difference from the first page is right here. Major 29, left hand just goes down a second. Second, third, G. It does say left hand over, which looks beautiful, but for me personally, that might add too much energy to play that softly. So I'm going to just choose to play my right hand gently up that octave. There you will have to watch that. So do that kind of reduction practice to set the intervals within the hands. Next we're going to talk about what chords this piece uses. We don't have the key signature of G, but if I look at the first and the ending measures, it's really centered on G. G is the tonic, so that's why I've labeled the Roman numerals as such. So now I'm going to go through and actually block the right hand as full triads. Left hand fifth, G major. I'm going to play just where it changes chords. Major five, E minor stays there, major nine. It's actually really beautiful. 
kind of jazzy chord A minor 7 is what that forms, just an inversion of it. Here's the root position of it. Back in, back out, D major. It's not confirmed it's major until there, so you can delay that. G major, major 21 down to E minor 25, A minor 7, goes out, ends with tonic G major. So that kind of reduction practice might feel challenging to do at first, but it's really worth it. It sets how it feels, which lets you think and look ahead as you're playing. And then when you go to perform it, it lets you focus on that next level of performance in terms of dynamics and style and mood. Next, let's move to the articulation stage of this piece. If we look at the score, all I have for articulations, not surprisingly for romantic, are slurs. But be careful to not just play everything completely connected. I'm gonna encourage you to play this without pedal. So that way you can think about it's all one breath when it's in the slurs, when a slur ends. Think about if you were singing this or playing this on a woodwind instrument, you would re-tongue or re-articulate the note that starts at the beginning of the next slur. So let me demonstrate that with no pedal. Staying at the keys, slurred. play another line of that, major five, connected and smooth, lift off the key. Keep it connected, breath. All one phrase, connected. So if you follow those two major groupings, it makes it even more special when you get to play that four major phrase from 13 to 16. So no pedal work with that and write in those commas in your score so you follow the slur links. Next, let's move up into the dynamics category. This is where it really becomes beautiful. So to follow the title of Dream Echoes, that's really reflected in the dynamics. I'm going to play this a pour demonstration so you can compare that difference. Here's the pour way. going to go back in listen to what you hear different all right so what I added in was phrase shaping growing to phrase goals I had some phrase variety so the dream echoes comes from first phrase is medium loud second phrase is an echo a soft idea and that's the idea throughout this entire piece let's go back in and look at our blue arrows which means the loudest point of our phrase so the music's going to sneak in softly light touch with the arms the fingers increases to there day crescendos but not every phrase goal is the same volume major five more to mezzo forte sneak in Go it about that's so piano intensify it echo careful at measure 12 notice that fifth is blocked different than 10 the biggest crescendo let it grow decrease so those dynamics are critical to let it sound very romantic so take your time Take it slow and listen that you always have a phrase goal. I'd even encourage you to record yourself, listen back, and see if those phrase goals are clear in your way of playing. All right, our last finishing steps really comes into the style and mood, which hopefully we've been working up to with following those smooth slurs and um, adding in dynamics. Let's talk about the pedal. That is quintessential for a romantic style piece like this. Pedal is written below the line, and the pedal that it means is the damper pedal, which I'll use with my right foot. We'll talk about pedal more in another video. Let me just kind of give you a brief overview. When the line is straight, it means the foot engages down on the pedal. It just stays down on that pedal while the line is flat. Measure three, when I see the little triangle, that means the foot goes up down. What's happening is the dampers are touching the strings to clear out the sounds. So let me play that so you can watch the way my foot goes up down simultaneously with my fingers. Isn't that beautiful? 
beautiful, that resonance that it adds, it makes it sound even more full from 13 to 16 where the pedal stays all the way down. So notice it changes every two measures to begin. Measure nine and 10, it changes once per measure. Think, lift, and measure 11, lift, lift, one lift, keep it down. I even do that in my private lessons and have my students say lift. So you can say that to remind yourself to get it used to that pattern of lifting. And the last thing we're gonna add to this piece is a sense of rubato. I'm gonna play it one more time, really strict in time so you can hear the way rubato adds so much to a piece. We start on measure 17 to the end. on the notes and rhythm my pedal was correct didn't do too much in dynamics rubato is an expressive um, timing typically we're going to push the tempo a little bit to those phrase goals we'll relax away from those save the most push for your climactic moments which would be like measures 13 through 16 and 29 to the end so let me play that again with tasteful rubato <laughs> I delayed that last note music so much about setting up expectations so when your audience expects something you can make them wait just a little bit longer for that that would also be appropriate at 15 through 16 make us wait for those final resolutions so hopefully you've enjoyed learning along with me go through and get that tapping correct don't hold notes through the rest follow those slurs add those breaths so you're lifting in between great piece to practice damper pedal Trusting your hand moves by doing that reduction practice. Add an expressive dynamics and expressive rubato. Have fun.